Hello and welcome to the section on visualising spatial data. In the previous section we worked with raster data. In this section we're going to talk about visualising spatial data and we're going to start with the basics of plotting in R. Welcome to the video on plotting basics. In this video we'll learn how to change the symbol and colour of the plot and finally how to save our plots. Open activity 4.1 in R Studio. For this experiment we're going to first load the natural earth data with which we're going to embellish our plot. Therefore we can go ahead and load these data. However most out the plot in this video will show the earthquake data from USGS. We already saw numerous times how to download these data and import them in R so you should already be familiar to what we are doing between line 21 and 35. The most basic way of plotting spatial data is by using the default plot function. This will automatically recognise that we're using data with a spatial component. In fact, as you can see from the plot we created, R recognised that these data have coordinates and placed them on the plot accordingly. From this plot it's difficult to see this, but these data for example are in California and these other in Asia. We can change the symbol with which R plots each seismic event with the option PCH, which stands for Plotting Character. This option takes the number that identifies the symbol. You can find the numerical ID of the symbol supported in R by looking at the website provided. As you can see, we're using the number 20, which corresponds to a filled circle, and indeed the plot now features circles to locate each seismic event. The option PCH can also take a custom symbol that you can copy and paste from the Windows character map. This needs to be provided in quotation marks and clearly the plot now features this new symbol. Another important option to consider is COL, which clearly stands for colour. By default R plots in black, but we can change that with this option which takes the name of the colour we want to use. In this case I simply used red to indicate I want my points to be shown in red. Another important option is CEX, which controls the size of the marker. This option takes a single number with the size we want to use for our points. The standard value is 1, so in this case we are plotting larger points. We could have plotted smaller points, for example, by starting CEX to 0 0.5. I included in the script the link to a PDF document with a comprehensive list of all the possible colours available in R. As you can see, we have literally hundreds of possibilities to choose from. As an example, I chose a shade of blue called State Blue 4, and as you can see, works perfectly. Now that we covered the basics, we can finally add the natural earth data to improve the clarity of our map. As in standard plots, spatial data can be added to the original plot with the function lines for polylines and polygons and points for spatial points. In this case, we have polygons, thus we are using the function lines. This adds the border to the map and greatly improves its readability. Now we can clearly see where the seismic events are located. The final part of the video is dedicated to saving our plot. There are several functions available to do so depending on the format we are going to use for saving. In this case we are saving in JPEG, therefore we are using the function JPEG. However, other functions exist which you can see by calling the help page, and they all work in the same way, therefore once you've learned how to use the function JPEG, you can also save in other formats. This function takes several important arguments, the first being the file name to be used for saving the plot. Here we can specify the file with extension. Then we need to specify the option width and height, with the dimensions of the plot. With the option units we can specify that width and height are specified in pixels. Finally, we can specify the resolution of the image. This is extremely important for publication since many journals want images with a resolution of at least 300 dpi as we set here. As you can see from the code here, the call to create the plot needs to be specified after the function jpeg. This is important because the function jpeg by itself does not save anything. This function basically creates an empty file on your hard disk and keeps it open for writing. Therefore, right after jpeg we need to call the function plot with all the additional elements we want to show on it. This is what will be written on the file. Finally, the call to a function to save plots needs to end with this code, dev.off open bracket, close bracket. This tells R that the writing to the image is over and that it can close the file. Only if dev.off open bracket, close bracket is called, the JPEG file can be opened. This is extremely important and you always need to include it. 
If everything was done correctly, we now have our working directory, a file named earthquake.jpg with our map. Nice work, you guys. In this video, we learned the basics of plotting spatial data in R. 